Hello everyone and welcome back to KDH Art Class. Today we're going to be making a color wheel and we're going to make it with watercolor paints. So in this case I'm using one of the kits. Uh, what's great about the kit is you get all these different colors and it comes with a paintbrush. Uh, please excuse mine. I just have a bunch of odds and end paint brushes that I put in there. I can't remember which one it came with. It's usually not a very good plastic one, but hey, we're not picky right now. We're just learning how to make a color wheel. Other options is you can use food coloring. Uh, if you're not going to keep the color wheel, you could actually use uh, Skittles in water and that will change the color and you can paint with that. Uh, just be careful that is sugar based and ants love it so bugs will find it but it works for how you want to mix you're going to need three colors you're going to need red yellow and blue those are your primary colors again we're using watercolors but you can also do it with other paints and i will do another one showing these washable tempered paints but the three primary colors red yellow and blue primary we're going to create secondary colors by mixing these together all right you're going to need something to draw a circle with you're going to need something to make straight lines with and of course something to draw with that could be a pencil i'm going to use marker so you can see it really well my circle happens to be a um, plastic bowl or plate, whatever you happen to have around, the lid of a, a butter tub or something like that, anything that gives you a nice circle, doesn't really matter what size as long as it's big enough that you can do uh, the painting in there and you have the ability to see it, you know, or you can actually fit your paintbrush in. Alright, so you're going to trace the circle. Again, feel free to pause the video if I am going too fast. We're going to divide this into six sections. So yes, the rainbow colors, here we come. I'm gonna start with the top to the bottom vertical line. So I've cut it in half. And then I'm going to make an X. And it doesn't have to be perfect. There's one diagonal line, and here's the other. And you're going to see mine is going to be very lopsided. But again, I want to show you, it really doesn't matter. I got some skinny ones, some big ones. You just need one, two, three, four, five, six areas. All right. Again, I know I'm going fast. Press pause. Get caught up, and then you can press play and keep going all right so let me zoom in here real quick so let's talk about our paints so like I said we're doing primary colors so if you want to write so that you know what your primary colors are they are red yellow and blue so those are your primary colors those are the ones we're going to be using to make new colors the new colors that we're going to be making are called your secondary colors. Okay. Secondary means two, kind of like second, second place. This means two. It takes two of these to make one of these. Okay, and now for those that are not familiar with watercolor 
paints, you don't just want to wet your brush and start going. You want this to get wet first. So I'm going to take my water that I have in a nice little solo cup here. And I'm going to put a drop or two of water into my red, into my yellow, and into my blue. Again, those are the only three colors I'm going to be using today. And you want it to sit for a few seconds just to activate or wake up your paint. Forgive me, I do a lot of mixing up here and I didn't clean it last time and that's all right. What's kind of cool with this is, you know, even after you make something, if you make a lot of it, you don't want to throw it away, it'll dry up and then all it takes is water and you can use it again. Just little bits of information I like to throw in here and there. All right, on our color wheel, let's get our pencil again. And in one section, you're going to put an R for red. Right. And the next one, let's go ahead and put an O. Then the next one, you're going to put a Y or yellow. Your next one, go ahead and put a G. Your next one, we're going to put a B for blue. And your last one, you can go ahead and put a P. Okay, that's going to help us know where to put our primary colors and then we'll figure out the rest as we go along. All right, by now, my little colors ought to be awake. So I, I like to wet my brush. It's okay if I go light, because I can always make it darker. If it's dry or too dark, it's a little bit harder to make it lighter. So my brush is wet. I'm going to go ahead and touch into my yellow paint. I like starting with yellow, so before my water or anything gets dirty. I'm going to use clean water in my yellow to keep my yellow very clean. And you're simply just going to paint, make sure you guys can see it, this first section, yellow. So again, I like to start out really light and watery. I can always add a little bit more paint to it. Okay. So there's my yellow. I get in the habit, I'm going to change colors, so it means I need to clean my brush. Right. Don't just dip it in and think it's going to clean. You actually have to go all the way kind of to the bottom and do a couple good rubs down there at the bottom. Then squish it on the side to get the extra drips out. Oop, my drips are still yellow looking. On my brush. Oh, there we go. Now it's cleaned up. All right. So I've done my yellow. And of course I put it next to the Y, which is yellow. And now I'm going to do my red next to the R. You can kind of see why I like using the point, the angled brush. Helps me kind of get into those corners a little bit more. Especially when I'm having a difficult time not turning my paper to confuse you guys. I usually like to turn my paper or my canvas so I get a better angle with my hand. Alright, right, so I added my red. I have my yellow, then all I really need to do, and this is what I mean by you can make it darker if you want, 
Now all I need to do for my next primary is put the last one in there, which is blue. Okay. There, that's better. It looks a little more red. And I need to clean my brush because I'm going to change colors. What's neat is your kids are going to be like, oh my gosh, look, the water's changing. Be careful they don't turn it into a science experiment where they waste all of this paint just watching the water change colors. Try and keep focused. All you want to do is clean your brush. Alright, my brush is being difficult to clean. There we go. Alright, so we've done red, yellow, now we're on to blue. Blue starts with the letter B. So let's go over here to where the B is. And you want to leave a space in between your primary colors. Good. And you'll fill in that pizza slice with blue or pie slice. A triangle position, cone, triangle cone shape. All right. And now I have my three primary colors. Time to clean my brush really well. Because now it's time to mix. There we go. Alright, so I have an O here. It's between two colors, two of the primary colors. One is your yellow, one is your red. Hmm. So, this is where the plate comes in. I'm going to start with my nice clean brush get some of this yellow and I'm going to put it so it makes a little drop of yellow. What's nice about watercolor paint is you don't need a whole lot of it. Now we're not mixing the whole thing. We want to keep it all in this tiny little area right here. Okay. Then clean my brush because I'm going to change colors. Now what I tell my students is the first time you start mixing, you are not going to make the uh, Crayola color that you want. It's going to be your personal color. So we're going to do orange. We started with a little yellow and we know the instructions and I call these instructions because you're looking at it, what it's telling you to do. Red and yellow will make this color here, orange. So we take just a little bit of red and most of you, you're going to get too much red, and it's not going to look orange at all. It's going to look reddish orange. And you're going to start mixing it into your yellow. And you see I'm pulling just a little bit of yellow at, the time, at a time. And mine orange is very much a red orange. That means I need a little more yellow. Okay. So I can keep cleaning my brush and adding more yellow, but because I happen to have it, I have another brush. I'm going to go ahead and load it up with yellow and put it over to the side. That way I don't have to keep cleaning my brush. Just a little bit to the side. Just in case I need even more yellow. I'm going to pull that in and mix it a little bit over here. Ah, uh, now that's starting to look more orange and less red. Ah. And if yours is looking too yellow, well then you're going to need a little bit more red to make it look orange. So I made the mistake of adding too much red in the beginning, but that's the mistake most of you are going to make. So I've added a little bit more yellow and a little bit more yellow. And now you can see it's starting to look a little different. That one's more red looking, this one's more orange. And I'm ready to kind of test it on my paper. Yep, that's the orange. 
and I can now put my orange into that pizza slice. Ooh, uh, isn't that beautiful? Ooh, there's all my fire colors. Anytime I would want to draw a picture of a campfire or the sun or something hot, I will usually pick yellow, orange, or red. So we call those our fire colors. All right, let's come on over here. We have a G and a P that we need to do. So let's look at what the instructions are telling us. The G is located between the yellow and the blue. Clean your brush. Clean it really good. There we go. Alright, so we need yellow and blue. I like starting with yellow. Make sure my brush is nice and clean. I load up the yellow. And I'm going to find a new spot on my plate. Put that yellow. It's hard to get it off this brush. It keeps hanging on. And we know if we add too much blue, it's going to do the same thing the red did. It's going to look, the red look too red when I added too much red. If I add too much blue, it's going to look too blue to make the G. Hmm, I wonder what color starts with a G. Hmm, interesting, let's find out. Okay, so clean the brush, or in this case, since I know I'm going to need less, I'm going to use a smaller brush. The advantage of already knowing this stuff is you have a bunch of this supplies all the way around. Clean your brush nice and good, touch it into the blue. Add your blue to the side, and then take your brush and start mixing it together. Ooh, look at that. I didn't add enough blue, because look at all that yellow I didn't use yet. So I can add a little bit more blue, and I can mix in a little bit more of that yellow. There we go. Excellent. Well, if anybody guessed green is the G, you are correct. Go ahead and take that green and start adding it to your paper. So, yellow and blue make green yellow and blue make green and the more you say it yellow and blue make green the better you're going to remember it because it's just repetition if this green is still too yellow for you of course you can take it and add a little bit more blue And it'll make a darker green until you get the green that you want. So I could have darkened this up and make it a little bit more green looking. When I look on the screen, my camera, it's making the colors look a little different than what my paper is showing. So I'm trying to make my camera color look more green. So it's fun experimenting, but you're getting to understand how to make the colors. More yellow makes new colors, more blues make new colors, more red makes new colors, more yellow makes new colors. And we will do that with uh, more advanced color wheels, but right now we're getting the basics. Red, orange, yellow. Now we've gone to green, blue. We've got one more color to do starts with the letter P. So I need to clean both my brushes. <laughs> and 
this. It takes me a few minutes to clean. Make sure you're doing a good job. Getting it really good because you don't want that green color mixed in with your others. All right. So now I'm down to the purple. And for some reason, this has always been the hardest color for me to mix. I have students that they mix it perfect the first time. Of course, there's no perfect. It's your purple. This is going to be Miss Howard's purple. This is Miss Howard's green and this is Miss Howard's orange. Nobody else is going to have exactly this orange because they don't have my exact measurements. Nobody's going to have exactly this green because they do not have my exact measurements. And nobody's going to have my exact purple because they do not have my exact measurements. You're going to have your own orange, your own green, and your own purple. And in my classroom, the kids always compare and I love it because they're learning so much that way. And, and they're just like going, oh, that's Miss Howard's purple. This is Susie's purple. That's Bobby's purple. There's Greg's purple. There's Joe's purple. You know, and it's just a fun, fun way of learning how to mix colors. So paint is the way to go. All right, we have purple. So what are our instructions that we need to have? Red and blue to make purple red and blue make purple. Let's see how to do it. We're going to start with our red and put it in a new spot. My red is already starting to dry out a little bit so go ahead and add a little bit more water. If I can get it to come off my brush. But that's okay. Again, I have two brushes. Clean your brush before you put it in the blue. And go ahead and get your blue. Go ahead and set it on the side next to your red. And when you're ready, you start mixing. And there's my usual mistake. I usually have too much red and not enough blue. So that means I need to get some more blue. Set it over here to the side a little bit. And start mixing. Oh my goodness, there we go. I'm starting to get my purple color now. When you have your purple color, you can go ahead and start adding it to your color wheel. Once you have completed coloring in that purple, congratulations! You have just made your first color wheel. So let's go back. The primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. And we separated them so there was an empty spot in between. And now red and yellow so I'm going to put R plus Y red plus yellow equals orange O R A N G E orange and on my color wheel because it took two of them one plus one equals orange a second dairy color so now we have yellow which is Y plus B which is blue equals G for green R E E N green so 1 plus 1 equals the secondary color, green. And that leaves us with the last combination of B plus R equals P, 
U R P L E purple very good everybody there's so much to learn we're gonna learn complementary and analogous we're gonna learn fire colors cool colors and how the analogous colors all go together because they kind of mix each other there's so much we're gonna learn using this color wheel so make sure you hang on to it if these upcoming lessons you want to continue to use paint with them this is the time to do it if not again we did the same thing with crayons and colored pencils so we learned to mix them on top of our paper and we learned how if we put the yellow first and the red on top that it made a new orange or if you put the red first with the yellow on top it made a different orange than that orange so you can do it with crayons you can do it with colored pencils we call that blending or you can do it with paint and we call that mixing mixing the paints or blending the crayons and colored pencils okay i hope you enjoy this lesson and look and i look forward to doing more color theory lessons with you bye